Now in dynamics, it's going to be critically important. If you're going to understand this stuff, it's going to be important that you understand basic concepts of calculus, that is derivatives and integrals. And what do I mean by this? Let's suppose I have some function, I'll call it x, which depends upon t. t can be, you can think of it as time if you like. And let's say x is just t cubed. Then the time derivative of x, or t derivative of x, would just be three times t squared. And of course the integral with respect to time would be one fourth uh, t to the power four, right? So there's a derivative, there's an integral. But when I say you should know the concepts of, in, of derivatives and integrals, I don't mean this. I don't mean being able to, by some recipe, be able to spat out derivatives of nice, very simple functions. Instead, what I mean is as follows. And that is, suppose there's this function x of t. I can think of t as time, if you like. So x is a function of t. I want to find that. I want to plot it. I want to graph it. But I don't know it. Instead, what I know is the time derivative, or the t derivative of x. And that thing is not some function I can just write down in terms of an equation, but I'm graphing it right here. So from this graph, can I deduce, can I determine what the function x is? And furthermore, given this function whose derivative I know, given this function whose derivative I know, can I find the second derivative? In other words, can I graph right here the derivative of this function? If you can do both of these, then I would say that you understand the basics, understand the, what the derivative and integral mean. Now in drawing these sorts of plots, I usually like to start with the derivative. So this function right here that I'm going to plot, the second derivative, that's actually going to be derivative of the first derivative. So this curve here should be the derivative of that one. Now if you're looking at this sort of confused, maybe you should go back and look at the notes that I've posted online. And when you do, you'll recognize or you'll remember that for the derivative, we can think of it as, at least interpret it intuitively, as first thing, we can think of it as a slope. Secondly, we can think of the derivative as a rate of change. So using this, let's go and tackle, let's go ahead and tackle this derivative. Let's look at first uh, this interval right here. I'll call it interval A. Now during interval A, my, my function here is not changing, right? It's not changing and it has no slope, it has zero slope. So the derivative of this function should be zero during that interval. Secondly, let's look at the interval of the function between right here and let's say right there. Here my function looks like a straight line, as straight as can be. Notice that the function is increasing. If the function's increasing, that means its rate of change is positive. Notice that it also has positive slope. So my derivative during this interval, I guess I'll give it a name, I'll call it interval B, the derivative during that interval must be positive. And look, the slope isn't changing and the rate of change isn't changing, right? So I should have something which is a positive and constant since the slope is constant. Now what I want to do is look at this interval right here from right there to the end. I'll call that interval C. And notice now my slope is negative. Now this thing's decreasing. The rate of change is negative. And that slope is constant. So I'm expecting there to be a constant negative derivative from this time right here all the way to the end. So what do you think? Those are the three easiest intervals where, where my slope is constant. In this case, slope is zero, slope is some positive constant, slope is some negative constant. Notice also when I drew this thing, when I had my positive constant here, that ended up being bigger in magnitude than my negative constant down here. At least I drew it that way because, at least to my eyeballs, it looks as though this slope upward seems steeper than this slope downward. So qualitatively, I want this thing to have a bigger magnitude than this one. Now to finish drawing these derivatives, what I'm going to have to do is fill in the gaps, right? I have this gap between uh, interval A and interval B that I have to fill in. I also have another gap between interval B and C. So how am I gonna do that? Now let's look at the slope. So the slope right at the left edge, or the right edge of interval A, the left edge of this, this interval I'm thinking about here, that slope is zero, right? It's zero. and Right at this edge, the right edge of the interval I'm interested in, the slope is some big positive number, this guy right up here. And when it goes from zero slope to this big positive number, it does so continuously. Notice that there isn't there isn't a, uh, a kink in this plot, right? It doesn't go from zero slope, then pow, sharp corner, up to some other slope. That slope changes gradually. It changes continuously. So therefore, when I draw its derivative, the slope is changing continuously. There's no sudden jump. There's no kink in the curve. 
so therefore it has to come up continuously. Now I don't know whether it comes up like this, maybe it's a sh exactly a straight line, maybe it's some nice super duper smooth thing, who knows exactly what that is. I can't really determine from this, this plot alone, at least my eyes aren't calibrated enough to, t to discern that. But what matters in this plot is that that's the derivative is continuous, no kinks. Similarly, from and going from this point right here to this time right there, again, the, the slope is changing continuously, right? And in fact, notice at the very top right here, it looks as though we reach a little peak where the slope is zero, right? So at this time right there, boom, my derivative should pass through zero. So I'm thinking this derivative curve should do something like that. And there's my derivative. Now in order to draw this other graph, what we're going to have to do is, is sort of the opposite, right? We're going to start with the function which is a derivative and get the original function itself, whose derivative is the thing, right? So I have to go backwards. And if you go back to your notes of what calculus or what these operations of calculus mean, and you go back to the one for an integral, what did we discover? First of all, integration is an antiderivative or the opposite of a derivative. Right? It goes the opposite way. It does the opposite things the derivative does. And secondly, the integral, we can think of it as an area under the curve. And when you draw these integral graphs, you're going to have to give it an initial condition. So let's choose one. Let's say x at time 0 has to be 0. So we're going to start at this point right there. And I'll start thinking about it in terms of this idea of antiderivative, right? So here we have the derivative of this function x negative. What does that mean? If the derivative is negative, then the function itself must be decreasing. It must have a negative uh, rate of change. And notice also that my derivative is constant, so the rate of change must be constant. So I'm thinking in this first little interval right here that this thing should be something with constant negative slope. And you can think work it backwards too. You know, what's the derivative of this thing? It's going to be constant and negative. Boom, there you go. So there's my first in interval. And notice when we get to here, what hap or when we go from here, this point right here, to this point right here, what's happening? The derivative starts decreasing, or I should say, the derivative starts increasing. The magnitude decreases, right? It gets closer to zero. So the slope of this thing should be shallowing out. In fact, when it gets to this time right here, this, the derivative is zero, so the slope should be zero. So this thing, its slope should getting more, be getting more shallow. And then finally, when it reaches this time right here, it should have zero slope. Once we pass this time, the derivative is positive. When the derivative is positive, my function has to be increasing. So there we go. Now it's starting to increase. Remember, we bottomed out at that time right there. And this is what I'm looking at. So this, this slope, this rate of change keeps on increasing, so the slope of this function keeps on increasing. It gets, on, gets steeper and steeper and steeper, like so. Eventually, this curve is going to cross the, the t-axis here, and x is going to be composite. When is that going to happen? That's a really good question. I'll let you think about that for a moment. When does this x become positive? When does it cross over? What's so special about this time right there? Pause the video and think about it for a second. Well, if we think of the integration as the area under the curve, I think we can answer this pretty easily. Notice that uh, for this first part of the integral, this area right here is all under, it's all negative, right? It's all under the, the x equals zero, the t-axis. So there's where x is getting more and more negative. Now, after this time, now I start getting area of above the axis. So this, so over here we had negative area, and over on this side we got positive area. Now when these two areas exactly cancel out each other out, in other words, when, the, when this positive area exactly cancels that negative area, that's exactly where my function x crosses over and becomes positive. Now what happens from this, this time out? Well notice my derivative, although it my derivative reaches its peak right there. My derivative is always positive, at least for all the way up until the end time right there. So my function is just going to keep on increasing and keep on increasing, right? It can't decrease. They're not going to meet some maximum anywhere over here. It's always going to increase beyond this time. 
but notice that the derivative gets smaller. In fact, it goes to zero right there. So what that means is, let's see, this function keeps on increasing, keeps on increasing. Eventually, ooh, not sure if I fit it into my video screen here. Eventually, the slope gets essentially zero at this time right there. But until it gets to that time, this function's always increasing. So there's my integral. And those are my answers to this problem. There's, there's my integral of this dx dt to get my function x at t. And I also showed you my derivative of this graph to get the second time derivative of x. Voila.